All right, so somebody had a question regarding how, with this rig, which is the newer uh, shoulder rig, it also comes with the barn doors and so forth, so you're looking for something that's actually uh, professional looking, this is the rig. And I'll put links for everything in the description below, so check that out uh, if you're looking to purchase it. This is a good device. This is the Panasonic uh, 25 millimeter. It doesn't have uh, optical image stabilization on it. Neither does this lens, which is the SLR Magic uh, 10 millimeter. But the person wanted to know how do I stabilize that shot walking? And I've taken some footage uh, earlier so that you can see how I actually did that. And there's a few tricks to it. So one is if you wanted to cheat, you can get a wide angle lens like the SLR Magic here. This is just a, a hood on that. And this particular item, being 10 millimeter, is really wide. So it produces a nice clean image at a very wide angle. So it is forgiving on any of the jarring motions and so forth. So that's one way to do it is to cheat by taking a wide angle lens. The second is to have a, an, a lens that works in fact, she's using it right now, which is the it's a Panasonic 12 to 60. It's got uh, optical image stabilization in the camera lens itself, and this uh, Blackmagic Pocket 4K will take advantage of that. However, for the filming of this, so you saw them working on some leg exercises, I did not use any optical image stabilization whatsoever. I used this, which had none and I use this, which I had none. We can go to another third <laughs> trick, instead of using wide angle lenses, is to also shoot large. So if you're, if you can get away with 2.6K in your shooting, and you shoot 4K, that means you can, you can work stabilization in post later on. I use DaVinci Resolve Studio, and that allows me to get the um, stabilization. I can punch in pretty far if I'm using 4K, if I'm just delivering for HD and you shoot in 4K, you can do stabilization uh, miracles with it. You can, you can get away with quite a bit. But I didn't want to do that, so I put this thing in what we call a long wheelbase. So if you think about a car, a limousine is smooth because it has a long wheelbase. It's smooth for the, for the passengers. And what happens is when you set something in the middle like this, I'll turn this off for the moment, when you set something in the middle between two long stabilization points, what happens is those things may uh, trigger a lot of excessive motion and so forth, but what stays near the center barely moves. It's just physics, it's just the way levers and so forth work. Uh, so if you set this up really far on one end or really far on the other end, you're going to get a bit more jolting. That'll translate directly to the camera a bit more. If you kind of set it back, and like this, I can go back even just another couple inches, uh, then you don't have to worry about that as much. So any types of movements and jolting here doesn't immediately get transferred right there. If I bring this shoulder mount up here, now you can see that any little shoulder movements and so forth will cause that to, to jiggle a lot more. But I go like this and I do those same type of things, it'll actually reduce the amount of uh, micro-movements uh, that this receives. So when you also think about film back, so it's not just here the, where it's coming in, it's actually being received about here. So we're looking at where the plate is actually being read for the data acquisition. So just like on a limousine, you, have, uh, you can have a couple of different ways of doing it, front to back wheelbase, also uh, one side to the other wheelbase. So when I'm actually walking and working this, my legs will take on that wider base, especially if I'm not moving, that sort of thing. But when I move, I try to keep that mentality of staying a little lower than I would normally uh, do. I'm not up high, really high on my points here because it's very difficult to balance properly so one of the better ways to do that is to bend down so you can see how I get a bit more of a base, uh, dynamic floating base. The more muscles, and I know this also from a lot of the self-defense training that I teach over many decades, 
is the more muscles you recruit for an action, especially for balancing systems, especially in these positions. So when I have not just the quads and the calves going on here, which means I bring my heels off the ground a little bit, this will actually provide a more stable and adaptive base for uh, the filming, the camera. If I'm locked up on my heels, I lose my flexibility or I lose the involvement of the calf to help in the stabilization process when I move, when I walk. So you want to bring yourself more to the balls of the feet and some people will call it like a ninja walking and so forth, which I've also trained for in the past, so I know a little bit about that as well. Uh, but this is just a modified version and we're looking at recruiting a lot more muscles that will help in stabilization. That also can be trained to high levels. So your walking can be improved upon by quite a bit. If you are, again, locked out on your heels, what that does is it locks your knees out. And what that means is you will transmit more of your movements on the ground as jolts up the chain into what you're doing. If you bend forward, knees slightly forward, and somewhat over the toes, you will relieve pressure off of your heels. So when you're doing this, you want a flexible adaptive base. And that means that you are going to be able to move around a particular pivot. The pivot is the focal point, the object of interest, that you happen to have on your screen. I won't be doing a lot of panning shots. If I'm trying to do something, I want to have in my sights one particular object, one point, that I will then use as if it was a line or a string drawn right to the point. Then what I do is, we'll turn this on for a second. So if I have a focal point, like, let's say her head at this point, and I move around that singular focal point, it's much easier for me to line up the rest of my body to maintain adherence on that point. If my point is unclear, meaning I start moving around where I no longer have her head as the focal point, but I have the head and then I kind of slip over to there and then I go back to the head and I go back to the shoulder and back to the head and so forth. That's much more movement. So no matter what I'm doing with the rest of my body, like here, if I'm doing it nice and I have one point of focus, then maybe I'll go to the camera, one point of focus. All of this is while I'm moving. If I don't have any real um, focal point, if I'm just diffuse in that, I'm trying to go from one to the next and whatever else, you're going to see that regardless of how smooth I move my feet here, I'm going to have a lot more unintended motion for the viewer, <laughs> which will make them seasick at some point. So pick a point in your uh, focus, narrow down like as if you've got a string tied to that. That means that you can't, whatever you're aiming at has to, your body has to line up to that point. It can't be going over here. Because remember, if I move this, then whatever is mounted here gets more jolting motion. Because I'm, I'm going from shoulder to elbow to, to head and whatnot. But if I stay on one point, then that minimizes how much travel I have up on the Y plane if you're looking at uh, 3D motion. So I want to keep it at a focal point like that. And that minimizes what's occurring here, like on that shoulder mount. So that will be part of what you're doing. You've got a few things. You can add some cheats. And they're not really cheats, they're, they're, because sometimes you may be using a wide angle lens. And that may be just what you need for a particular shot. So, Wide angle lens works, slow motion works, but then you can't have people talking very well with slow motion. Uh, having this works if you expand it to where you've got a wider shoulder mount base. The other is to make sure that your feet aren't locked out on their heels. 
You can't be shooting back like that and expecting to not transfer stiff-legged motion directly into that because it will happen. Bend the knees forward, round out a little bit, that will help. Remember to go on the balls of your feet for any action. And it's trainable. It is something that I teach all the time <laughs> to my students. The other aspect is to make sure that you are focusing on pinpointing one structure in the scene and staying with that. We don't want to introduce any far range focusing or point uh, manipulation uh, randomly. We want to make sure that we are aiming at one source and moving around that as a, as a pivot. That way it doesn't introduce excessive motion. Now sometimes, if you want to go back to the Blair Witch Project, and I don't know why anybody would, uh, it was a nice little gimmick back in the day, and sometimes you will use jerky motion, but if you're doing it right, you can use the jerky motion with focal points at each time when you're moving around. So I can be jolting around and then aim, lock on for a second jolt, aim, and lock on, and so forth. So you'll get some of that realistic movement, but your audience won't get sick. This will all help minimize and make it so that you can walk a bit better, focus a bit better on your subjects, which helps to know what you're focusing on. You can't have a lazy camera person. I've got great camera people. I've trained them that way. And a lot of time on the job has made them that way and their own little quirks with their own bodies. They figured that all out. And they are trained to do this type of walking because of the self-defense training, which you can look over at our core JKD channel. I teach a lot of that as well. If you like what you saw today, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't and share the heck out of this so we can grow this channel. I've got a lot more content coming, so please keep on the watch for that. And thank you for watching.